a great deal of you in the matchless name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same. His promises are the same. There is no extra. Every, all the time, His promises are, are, are true. The Bible says that it's always yes, and it is never a no. So today, as we are in the presence of God, you put your faith in God, faith in the Word. I would like to close this word today, this, this series of teaching about faith. Let's, let's look into the Word, even the previous chapters, uh, previous lessons, or previous deep teachings. Instead of faith, Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. But those on the good ground are the ones who, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with faith. When we plant the seed, the seed always, seed always germinates and it sprouts. It will only give fruit only the good ground. It will never bring any fruit in the ground. Because at the time of production of fruit, even before that, that, that seed, or sorry, the plant will die off. It will not be plant if it is not a good ground. Now, we are studying about faith through the word, the word of God. And the word has to, to be laid or word has to take root in a good heart. A good heart means a willing heart, an obedient heart, an acceptable attitude towards the word. At that point of time, we are supposed, we are we must be ready to remove all the all the all the bad weeds or bad bad experience of healing, all those things. Maybe like a hereditary uh, you know, sometimes faith you received from your father, from your mother line, somewhere you know you receive some ideas of faith. Some really forms of religious worship that comes. Because by inborn, those who love God, they have an idea of God. So they they generate all forms of worship. By giving some offering to God, they think that they please God. It never So we need to really evaluate ourselves. Where the word will grow. Sometimes you may you may think that the, you are doing the best. You may feel that you are the only one best person. Maybe that is the one which will block you from exercising faith. When you compare yourself to someone, your faith will not grow. You stay as what you are. Don't look at the others. How they operate faith. It depends. Operation. Faith operation in me is different than faith operation in you. Faith operation in me is different than my, my wife. So it depends. So we need to, we need to outline how, oh, sorry, not how, who, who are we? What is the plus and minus of us, not anybody else? And remove the minus and make that minus as a plus through the word of God. That's the area where we studied about. The first point is doubt. Doubt is a minus point. You remove doubt and make it as a plus. So it's minus inside you. So you bring Jesus Christ into it and it becomes a plus. 
So when you doubt, when you are really doubt within you that it will not work, I don't think it is so difficult, it is so hard. That's the time you will bring Jesus into that minor situation, into that that trouble area. You bring Jesus and say that, Lord, you are able to do it. I don't know. I'm doubtful. But you can do it. Doubt is not an it's not an uncommon thing. It is a common thing in everyone. Everyone. Don't just think that the people who operate in operate, you know, like big big evangelists or apostles or people go to exercise on faith. Well, everybody is having doubt. Because doubt is an inborn thing. Doubt comes when you are insecure. You have no confidence. Don't just think that all the others are good and you are the only one who is having doubt. Everybody is having doubt. But when doubt comes, those people will bring Jesus into that doubt. And the doubt, I mean, the doubt disappears. When you trust Jesus, meaning when you trust the word of God, doubt disappears. That's what it is. So, we get into, I'm not going to back and teach more. The second point is, pre-understanding. Pre-understanding takes your faith out. If it is not properly balanced according to the word of God. You may be a good person, but your pre-understanding, you should evaluate with the word of God. Then you will know there is a minus, there is a plus. When when you are going through a when you are going through a troubled situation, when you are going through some problem, some 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 tension, some some pressure is there, that's the time you need to understand one thing. Hey, this trouble has come to make my faith more stronger. I am not going to be moved by this trouble. But whereas I'm going to be more stronger, I'm going to believe Jesus Christ. If suppose somebody comes to you and corrects you at that trouble time, receive that correction as a plus point. You may not like it when someone comes to you and tell you that oh, maybe you know, this is the problem, maybe you are wrong. You may not like it. We try to, to pacify us, we try to encourage us and say that what you're doing is correct. But let me tell you, Take it as a good advice from the Lord and start searching through the word and study it and put yourself into the hands of God and receive the word and you shall be made well at that point of time. So pre-understanding is, is, is very important to check our pre-understanding about God. I said about three faith. A person can have Three different faiths. One is the operational faith or the natural faith comes through our birth. Spiritual faith or the operating faith in spiritual worship and in spiritual growth. The third is gift of faith that is as equal as the faith of God. Operational faith for supernatural miracles of God comes through the gift of faith. That is different. You don't have to have a hundred percent faith to operate in miracles. That is the gift of God. That is the same faith of God. Even you may doubt it. I don't know if it will happen or not. Suppose you you are going to to, to, to see a person who is really deformed and you know it's like all cliche. And they are telling you, Come on, can you pray for me? You have no no faith that through you, God is going to work. But God will work. Yes, brother, I will pray, but I doubt it. This kind of situation, I don't know whether it will. But you will pray, and there is in the miracle, that is, though you have doubt, God's gift operates. Amen? So, these areas we need to understand. Don't just entertain doubt, but you can allow yourself in the hand of God and say that, Lord, I believe you are able to do it. Amen? That's what it is. Now, two different claims or state which neutralizes the faith. I said about your faith can be neutralized. Even though you are working hard, your faith can be neutralized in various situations. One is 
you need to identify your state before your born again experience and after the born again experience. How do you feel about your past and the present? And now in, in connection with this, following God in carnal nature produces spiritual bitterness. So that means your past life should not influence your present born again state. It will neutralize the faith in God because you pray more and more, no reason. And in the end, you will just see that, you know, you are nowhere reaching. You are not able to produce anything. Now the second point is following God, but to suit to our tailored situation. It's very important. One thing you need to understand is you are following God. You are just loving God. You want to do many things, but you are tailoring everything according to your bedroom, according to your sitting hall, according to your kitchen, according to your sign. Just come out of all those. Then you will see your faith is just growing. When it comes to that level, you have to sacrifice many things. Operation of faith in a person, it doesn't happen just like this. God will allow you to go through a lot of constraints, a lot of restrictions, a lot of sufferings. Lord, it, Lord will not allow sufferings upon our life, but the thing is, you may have to go through narrow paths. If there is no highway, you can only go through like small narrow places. That time you will constrain yourself. But that is also part of life. So that you know how to walk in the precepts of God. In the ministry. See, when we think about faith, it, it's about ministry. It's about ministering to God. Any ministry you name, your personal life is a ministry to God. Do you believe that? Your ministry is that. Because God has chosen you as priests to serve Him in the presence of God. He did not call you as pastor, evangelist, apostle. No. But He has chosen all these fivefold ministries in the, within the walls of church to nurture you, to bring you into a level where you will be able to walk. We know we need all these ministers in the church. But personal life it's a ministry to God. That ministry to God works with faith only. Nothing else. Your offerings, your time, your reading of word, that's all part of it. But your walk with God is basically through faith. Because the Bible says in Hebrew as well as in James it says, without faith you cannot please God. Amen. Whatever you do, you are every Friday you are coming here. Every other services you are here. But if you are a person who is not having real faith in God, meaning you are not able to bring the word alive in your life, really working experiences of the word in your life, then your walk of faith is not in alignment to God's faith. Every believer is a minister to God. Tell your neighbor, you're a minister to God. You are the one who is ministering every day. As priest in the church, you are a priest in his house. You need to worship him, praise him, bless him. Every morning, priest goes there and, and do the ministry. They clean the vessels, they clean the, the lampposts, everything. They clean the whole church in the same way. You are a priest to God. So when it comes to faith, you need to really bless the Lord every morning. When darkness closes in, still you need to praise Him. Hallelujah. It is not that the enemy is shooting with you, shooting, shooting you with his gun, and you will say that, no, today I have no more. I have a score. How many times I have praised Him, but no, no, no sign of any victory. That's the time you need to still serve Him. You cannot just say that I have a headache, so today I am not praising God. I have a leg pain, I am not praising God. Today it is wind outside, I am not praising God, I am not going to church. Today it is dusty, I am not going out. Don't, don't just say that. 
Don't sit at home. At, even you are at home, do what you are supposed to do because every morning God is looking at you, waiting for you to minister to Him. He needs ministry. He needs ministry of your praise. Understand this. Though I, we are studying about praise, this is a vital part in understanding how to bring faith life in your life. Maybe I may not be able to close today's message also. But I still, I want to go in the flow of the Spirit of God. If your, your, your faith is not progressing, something wrong with your ministry. I'm not talking about the church ministry, your personal ministry. You need to really love God and worship Him and praise Him. Continuously, you praise God. You must worship God. Even you are so busy. Even the enemy is attacking you so hard. But let me tell you, even you start ministering and walking with God, your one word can stop the enemy. Hallelujah. Your one word of praise can stop the enemy. That's what it is. When you point your finger towards the enemy and say, shut up, it will keep quiet. That happens only when you are really continually praising and ministering to God. Because the Bible says that we are lively stones Build it together to offer up sacrifices which is acceptable in the presence of God. You are a priest as well as you are an altar. You are the one who is really in the presence of God. Bring fragrance, sweet smelling aroma in the presence of God. Your praise is so sweet smelling in the presence. You, you know that? When you are going through trouble, don't just think about, oh, I'm, maybe something is wrong with me. God doesn't like me. God is punishing me. You forget about all those. Still, you will say that, Lord, I love you. But at the same time, you correct your life, tailoring all those your needs. You just throw it away and say that, Lord, even there is no food, no water, no air, still I will worship you. Hallelujah. You must do that. Then you will see things are changing. Then again, we learned about your spell, declaration and confession. What you say is what you get. You learned about it. Your confession should be positive. Don't confess negative over anything, over your children, over your spouse, over your work, over the church, over the pastor, over the leader, over the, your manager. No, don't just say, as a faith-oriented person, speak positive. Even at your company, please speak positive so that you are blessed. If the more you speak negative on anything, your faith is going down because you are hearing every time negative. I really discourage those who speak continuously negative, just start thinking positive so that your faith also won't and get up and awake within you and see different, different. Because, you know, your word can influence the whole atmosphere, whole surrounding, the plant, anything which has life, it can. It can. Your word can influence them. When you bless the food, the food is blessed. That's what it, when you bless the water, that's what that basically, principally, and basically, it is from the word. The Lord said, I will bless your food. I will bless your water. I will bless your job. I will bless your house. I will bless you when you come inside. I will bless you when you go. When you come inside, you curse. The curse will stay there. When you go out, you will call curse. You will speak negative. That will stay there. But when you come inside, blessed be the name of the Lord. When you see anything, when you see your children, bless them. When you get up in the morning, bless them. Let your homes be filled with the praises of blessing. I mean, you speak peace at home every time. In the car, wherever you are, you just speak peace and it will stay there. That is faith. Why I am telling you this? Faith is always possible. Faith doesn't look at negative. Never ever it looks at negative. 
faith just jumps over every negative. When the medical sign says there is a negative report, oh, you will just say, oh, I praise God. I will tell you a testimony. Two days back, one of our family friends, they are from a Catholic background. Husband doesn't like because their family is taught in that. But this girl is calling me from the wrong place. I always pray for her. I lift her up. I said, don't worry. The Lord will bring you in the, in the right place. She wants to come and change this place. She loves to come to it. But she's not seen this place. She has only seen me on Facebook as well as our website. I will always tell her, don't worry. You just come and wait. The Lord will do the thing. So two days back she called. She said, Pastor, you don't have to come. I said, what? I'm really. She was asking for my wife. My wife was going to go as a youth the lady. I said, don't worry. Tell me one thing. There's a problem in her blood. It's like hepatitis C. She said, except her of her. She works in a very big, very big hospital. Except her hospital, she gets always negative reports. But in her hospital, when she checks, it's positive. And they are working on it. It's a big problem. She went to many, many other salmanians. They say it's negative. And they question why this is negative. This is all negative. Whether negative or positive. Who just trust you? Who can make that negative or positive? She was crying. I felt very uh, I said, okay, now I'm going to pray for her. So next day morning, the same blood which they collected is going to test on the next day morning. Okay, think about this. In this situation, already they took half of the oil to use to test. And then half is kept there to recheck again. But for a period of more than a year, I think, periodically they check and they always get this variation. So she told me, this is what it is. I said, never mind. I going to pray and you will see the miracle that God is going to do it. I prayed. I just prayed a prayer of faith and I Today morning as I am coming to the, uh, to the church, she told me, praise God. Now, but it is a warfare. I want to kill you. It's a warfare. I know the faith works. I know the faith works. And it was a spirit, just a demonic spirit, which is fighting with her. This hepatitis B or C or these are all spiritual problems, not an uh, issue in your, in, your, in your body. We rebuke that spirit. Keep going. Don't do anything. Just come on. Is it no? Just. They did not take your blood afterwards. You think about it. The blood was already taken. There is a report. And always there is a report with variation. But if this is the place where you will operate in faith. You, know, you understand what I am trying to explain is the blood which is collected is already having a report with the variation and that really stands with the previous report. But now, after the prayer, the same blood is normal. That is the thing I'm talking about. Ask God. When you think about, oh, a dead body, I will pray. That is what is faith I am talking about. When you see the dead body, you will not pray. But when you see a broken, maybe or some sickness, something, ah, yes, yes, we will believe that. Jesus will do. No, think about Jesus can do both. It is the same spirit, it is the same word which will work. Because it is for the glory of God. Amen. So praise the Lord. Now, you are spelled your declaration confession that we dealt with. Now, last week, I said about looking for evidence. That's another major problem. If you, after the prayer, if you look for evidence, oh, then suppose if I think or she thinks that, oh, that is already taken. Now, any, how I am going to do? And I asked her, what about, are they going to take a sample tomorrow morning? She said, no, it's already taken. They will not take once again. They will, are going to take again. I said, don't worry. If they don't take, also no problem. If they take, it is good. Otherwise, also no problem. So you, you need to be calm. 
But you may think, what? Pastor, you are not the one who is going through this difficulty. The other person, you can just say, oh, boy. But sometimes, I am also discouraged. See, I am talking about things. I am talking about things. But I am encourage myself and say that no, nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop you, dear brothers and sisters. You may not be a very powerful, strong, and wounded person, but nothing can stop you. Why? Because Jesus is good. You mean? It is not because you are so anointed and powerful and the no. It is Jesus Christ is with you. When you speak a word, that's enough. But speak with boldness and with conviction within you. And he will prove that. Looking for evidence should be removed. Today, today we are going to study about just shall live by faith. Say that. Just shall live by faith. Say once again. Just shall live by faith. Tell your neighbor. Just shall live, your, live by faith. Now, you know the story of David and Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of Saul. David was the son of Jesse. God chosen, God chose Saul and David also. David was chosen after Saul was the first king of Israel. And according to the lineology, Jonathan must be the king once Saul is dead. But situations, as we study the word, you know that Saul could not reign in his kingship for a long time. God chose him. Almost, almost 40 years, David had to go through problems. He had to run here and there. He had to hide things to exercise faith. Just can't be by faith. There is a just first. The Lord says, He is of my heart. He is my friend. My beloved. That's what the, 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 the owner David. God chose him to be the great grandfather of Jesus Christ. A just first. And the Bible says, just shall live by faith. But 40 years with the tremendous anointing of praise and worship, he wrote more than 100 psalms. There are many psalms which he has written. Such a beautiful, praising, adoring, honoring word which we use in worship. Such a word. But his psalms, his songs, everything was when he was in distress, when he, he was in hiding, when he was in cave, when he was in, in between the enemies, when he was fighting. It was, it, was, it was a situation where you may not praise God. You may be just wandering here to hide yourself so that the enemy will not attack you. But David, what he did? He just praised God. Whenever, wherever he got an opportunity, he started praising God. He will just ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do right now? He never did anything without consulting God. He just he just worshipped God. He inquired about the situation and he just praised him. You know, but Jonathan, is also a nice man, a wonderful person, a brother loving person. Because the Bible says that David and Jonathan, they were knit together. Their souls were so knit together that they love each other. They made many covenants that they will not harm themselves or their family members. They will not harm each other. But the selection of their spiritual life was two different, or not what, it was in two different planes. Just read this. 
1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20. Verse 42. 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 42 says, And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace. This is the last time they are going to depart themselves. They are going to decide about their destiny. One person is thinking about going back to the palace and another person is going to a place where he has to hide himself and start encouraging himself in the Lord. Think about two situations. Jonathan knows the future. Jonathan knows the future that his dad is no more going to be the king after some years. As long as he is strong, he is powerful, he can just reign on, on in the kingdom. But David has a tremendous anointing and David is anointed by God and he, has the, he is having a strong future. Jonathan knows about it. So at the time of departing, Jonathan made it. He looked at the possibilities physically. But David looked at the impossibility through a possibility of the promise of God. You, we, are, we are going to study. Jonathan just looked at the possibility of becoming a king and staying within the limits of authority and power. A nice, wonderful person. You can be a wonderful person. You can be a very nice person. Brother loving, helping, standing for people. You know, Jonathan stood for David. He spoke to, the, to, to his father many times. And he scared him from death. He helped him. But he selected of his future was wrong. I just want to tell you, if you want to have faith, or if you have faith, it will never destroy you. It will only bring you. It will secure your throne, your chair, your position, your family, your stability, your name, your honor. It just fills every moment. But Jonathan selected a wrong selection. And he looked at his father, though he knows that there is something wrong with this man. You know, when you look at your friends, those who are listening, understand one thing. Don't just make decisions because of your friends or father or mother or your brother or sister or wife. You take, when you take decisions in the Lord, take it in Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to take in Jesus Christ. Look at the possibilities through the impossibility at the present situation. For David, it is an impossible thing to stay within the kingdom or within the palace because any moment Saul will kill him. But David looked at the possibility of becoming, living in the promise of God through the impossibilities which came in front of him. And he decided to go to the woods and Jonathan decided to go into the city. That's what the Bible says. Since we have both sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, May the Lord be between you and me, and between your descendants and my descendants forever. So he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Amen? He selected the city, having peace, name, fame. Some of you chosen this way. Those who are listening this, those who are watching this, I want you to choose. Though sometimes it is painful, difficult, choose that one so that God can bring the right future in you. Sometimes you look at where you are, what society you belong to, your family, your status, your honor, that one, this one, your pre-understanding, everything you mix together and forsake Jesus' way and you select your company, your friends, most of the time, coming into true worship, what it matters is the friend circle, the society, or the, 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 the family values. But I want to tell you something. If Jonathan 
forced him to stay with David and run away from the from the palace then Jonathan should have been there in the biblical chronicle chronicle book as a good person in the Lord but he did not they were killed Saul and all his children were killed immediately after the time when the right time came for David to become the king For Samuel chapter 23 verse 16 And Jonathan, Saul's son, Eros and went to David into the woods and strengthened his hand and in God. See, in between he went and he helped David. Another verse I want you to read. And the two of them cut a covenant before the Lord and David stayed in the forest and Jonathan went to his house. Sometimes you may be a good person too support the people who are suffering. But it doesn't mean that your name is written in the book of the Lamb of God. Understand this. You may be a very compassionate person. To go around and help people. Give wise advice. But it doesn't mean that you will be written in the book of the Lamb of God. You must walk with Jesus. You should experience pain. You should put yourself in the hands of God and walk in Him so that Every doing of you will be accounted and it will be rewarded. So, David and Jonathan, these are two clear examples of faithless and a faithful faith. Jonathan just looked at the physical, but David looked at the, the invisible, which God promised him. So, initially when faith operates, you need to understand, don't just look at all the things have come very close, so this is the best. But whereas the other side, no, I don't want to go into the other side where everything is dim. No, you just wait on God and look at look at him and ask what do you want me to do? David was a man of prayer. David was a man of praise and he praised and he worshipped God and he learned from the Lord that Lord and the Lord must have spoke to him that stay in the forest. And sometimes he says, Oh, one day I shall be killed by this king or king, king Saul. But still, God sent his prophet into the place where he was and they spent him. Faith, you have to see. Without payment, no faith comes. If you are thinking, Oh, who wants to go through such a hardship? I don't want to have faith. I will just live like that. You will never live. But if you have faith, you will love it. Maybe you go, you are going through a difficult situation. When you come out of that, you will love to have more of that because you will know how much God loves you during your trouble. Don't invite trouble in your life. Okay? If God allows, let that. I am not facing that suffering is part of our Christian life. No, I don't believe. We go through this narrow path. That's true. But that is only to strengthen us, experience pain. Amen? And moreover, it produces Christian character. When you go through trouble, it produces Christian character. A Christ-like nature should be developed. That is through pain. That's what I'm talking about. Now, just shall live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on the tablet that he who reads it may run. For the vision is still for an appointed time, but it speaks to the end and it does not lie. Though it lingers, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Verse 4. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. You know, when God speaks, when you receive a promise from God, gave it that promise. If you have a dream, if you have a vision from God, you were praying and God showed you something, you need to entertain that vision very often in your life. 
When you are dying off with something, you need to bring that vision alive in you. Keep on, keep remembering it and speak about it. That's very important. You need to keep reading the word and speak the word. When the enemy is attacking you, you need to speak. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Your words of faith will destroy the enemy. No, maybe the enemy is powerful and he stands, but at the right time, the appointed time, it confused the enemy. Your enemy will be very quiet. He doesn't know what to do next. How it happened? Because you keep on speaking the word. If you are sick, keep the word, believe the word, and speak that by his stripes I am healed. The stripes of Christ is appearing within my spiritual body. And that is bringing healing in me. That is setting me free. My joints are free. My body is free. My nerves are free. My mind is free. My everything is free because my Jesus lives in me. You will speak by faith and you will entertain yourself as an encourager. When your friend, when your spouse, when people around you, even the Christian brothers, you are you are, your brothers in Christ may sometimes discourage you. They may not understand what you are going through. They may speak some words, it may hurt you. Sometimes it will discourage you. But that is the time you have to lay your hand over your head and bless yourself and call. I shall be called the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you bless the name of the Lord. Because there is nobody to lay hand on you. You just lay yourself and pray that Lord I bless myself. You will overcome. Don't just complain about the brother or sister or anybody. Oh, they are also putting me down. No. You have to go in your prayer closet and pray and worship and bless the name of the Lord. You will say you will come out of all those problems. That is faith. Initially, you may not like, you may not agree, you may not, you may not have that kind of an open understanding to do that. But doing something which is a different doing in your life can change your faith. Amen? You you might you may not you or you did not what I'm going to say is till now you haven't done that laying your hand on you and praying yourself. Meaning you understand that you are you are an you are you are not a, a first class person, you are not a you are not a child of God, you don't have that much unknowing to bless you, yes, you can bless you. You do that. You will do something different to strengthen your soul. You will speak to yourself. You will speak to your soul. And abide under the Spirit of God. Don't bring all this negative thoughts to you. You should speak. That's why David said, How? He became a man of faith. He said, Oh my soul, why are you downcast within me? Saul, what are you talking about? You are so disappointed. You are so disgraced. But I want to tell you, David is speaking. You trust God. You abide to the Spirit of God who is in you. And He is speaking to your spirit within you. Listen to the Spirit. What He says. And believe it. You need to instruct yourself sometimes. I do that. When I am not able to overcome. I, my, when my soul is out of control, when my mind goes out of control or some pressure comes, disappointment comes, some fear comes, I'll say, hey, come on, listen to the Spirit. What He says, do it. In Jesus' name. And He said, oh, everything settled. It was like a roaring sea. All of a sudden, the devil settled and said, hey, yes, yes. I can feel within me, I'm telling you. That's how I just stabilize myself. I said, hey, never ever repeat it. If you are near to me, you will say that I am telling you. I am telling you. That's what it is. Faith. You have to experience faith. So here, the Lord says, even if it's marriage, what is going? Who said? Who said? The Lord. 
where he said, when he said, he said in this way. What is what is saying? Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. For the wisdom is still for an appointed time. See, the fulfillment of your faith exercise may not be now, maybe after half a second, but not before the appointed. God may not give you an answer. He will not give you the correct time. 10, 11 o'clock, 15 minutes, and 30 seconds. I'm going to do this. He will not tell you. Because you will be alive. And if he says, Lord, 11 o'clock, 15 minutes, and 30 seconds, I will start praying for you, Master, 11, 15, 15 minutes. So within 30 seconds, I know how to pray God. You got it? So you will not prepare yourself until 11, 15 minutes. So within 30 minutes, you will say, Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. <laughs> God will not do it. So he will tell you to prepare yourself for the appointed time. So that's what. Because if he gives you a time, you will relax you. And if you know that God told you to, so if God, God is telling you that, okay, I'm going to give you this. This is next year. Okay, next year I'm going to do so you will flow yourself more. You will flow yourself. Anyway, next year only this year. Anyway, why I should start doing no fasting there, nothing. Oh, I fasted enough. Next year I will start doing this. I will read Bible. I will take a holiday, holiday for at least six months. So you will relax. And the other problem is that if you know that God is going to give you what you are after, that is definitely you are going to get it. Sometimes, you are ahead of the promise and you start believing and doing, acting in your physical sense. That is, without faith, you start creating things for yourself. God will not do that. So to bring a balance, God says, there is an appointed time. You just wait. So waiting time is our preparation. Waiting time is our, our expectation. Waiting time is the planting time. Waiting time is an attitude of receiving time in it. If you know that your friend is visiting you, your father-in-law is visiting, your mother-in-law is visiting, your father visiting, somebody is visiting, somebody good people are going to visit you, you will wait for them. You will wait for the no. You know the KFC man is going to deliver your pizza or your uh, chicken for the family bucket. You will wait for the call. Ding dong! If the sweeper comes or the sweeper, how do you I ordered for a pizza or a chicken bucket and now this fellow comes. Where he come? Why you come now? He will be angry. But you know that. Oh, the pizza man is come or the chicken fellow is come. You will be. Now you know what I am talking about. <laughs> Yesterday it happened, that's why I am bringing this. <laughs> we ordered a KFC. So we were waiting, just Thursday you don't get your own family. I think you hungry like a little. <laughs> really, I could not go out because <laughs> I was tired. So my sister came home, I joke and the told her. Then we ordered it. One hour, one and a half hours, nothing is working. And it is 11 30. I really want to sleep. So by the time my son took her cell phone and called to my number. So he wants to fool me. He's telling chicken KFC is coming. <laughs> then I said, Yeah, the KFC fellow is down, so I will go and open it. <laughs> but then he came out and no, no, I'm just fooling you. <laughs> That's what that's an expected oh any time to come with that. So just you know, so any point, what kind of expectation could be there for your business? That must be there. You should expect all the time. Whether it happens or not, just expect that my God promised it will happen. 
Amen. My God promised it will happen. You know, He is going to deliver what He promised you. Just wait for Him. Just wait for Him. It will be done. The Bible promises that just shall live by faith. Meaning, you will wait for it. You will wait for uplifting. You will wait for the honor. You will wait for the financial breakthrough. You will wait for spiritual spiritual growth. You will wait for your healing. You will wait for your deliverance. You will wait for everything on God, not in anything else. I mean, that's what it is. It says, sometimes it says. Sometimes you have to go through it. Sometimes, sometimes you have to be very, very like in difficult situations. Glory to your power, you can always protect. Because he has promised us today. I want to close this, this message in Christ.